Von Gravenitz and I work as an artist for Ignite Imaginations. I hope that you're all enjoying the Migration Matters Festival so far. My workshop is going to be based around a beautiful installation called Through My Window with poetry that was written by Genevieve Carver and Celia Sabanda and a wonderful film made by Laura Page. So today I'm going to be using their poem to inspire you to be creative in your own homes and we'll be making some mobiles and hopefully it might encourage you to write your own stories and possibly make a mobile using your own stories for inspiration. So here is an example of one of the mobiles that I've made which takes inspiration from the lines purple, orange, yellow, she wore her best colours. And as you can see, I've taken the different coloured tissue paper and cut into paper, it's actually an old map, the letters H-O-M-E, obviously to spell home. I've incorporated that with these dancing figures, inspired by another line, dancing became the only constant in my life. And to make these paper figures, I've actually cut into old music score. This mobile is actually inspired by all of the nature that was mentioned in the poem. And for this, I've used scrap bits of paper that I had in my studio um, that were covered in bits of uh, paint splatters. And I've used a craft knife to intricately cut out um, a design into the paper to make these beautiful silhouettes. Here, this is an old birthday card that I had lying around the house. Here, in this small little uh, silhouette of a bird, um, I've actually threaded through a little twig so it looks like he's perched on a branch. So here we are, I've collected some materials that we're going to need today for the workshop. As you can see, I've got some dead branches here that I collected from my walk. I've got some gorgeous fern, sycamore, beech and ash leaves. You can see that I've collected some ribbons and I've actually cut up an old piece of fabric from a favourite clothing and turned that into a ribbon. I've got string and cotton, scissors, sellotape and fishing wire, some glue, a collection of postcards and birthday cards that I had lying around the house that I've saved and then we've got an old map some vintage music scores, pieces of tissue paper, and I've actually prepared my own piece of paper by splattering paint all over it, so that that'll be really lovely to cut one of our birds into today. And not forgetting, we've got um, a pen, pencil, and a craft knife. Be careful, because they are very, very sharp and I've actually got some feathers and some grasses there as well. You can either draw your own design if you feel confident and that would be great or you could use some of the templates that are downloadable and you can print out and cut those out. So um, I'm going to start with a bird here. So I've just got my template ready and cut it out and I'm going to use a piece of paper that I've actually prepared with uh, paint splats Obviously, if you've just got some thickish paper at home, you could use an old uh, food packaging. And then what I've done is literally just got a paintbrush, some very watered down paint and flicked um, the paint all over the paper to make this kind of like really bright effect. Um, don't worry about it, it doesn't need to be perfect. So it's just a case of creating colour and um, getting lots of textures onto the page. Here's one that I made that's dried. So if you've got time at home, you might like to let one there dry and then do the other side so that when your mobile is hanging, there's um, textures and colours on both sides of your mobile. I'm just going to choose a nice, oops, a nice spot um, on the paper that I like the look of. I'm going to get a pen and just draw around the outline of my bird. Don't worry about it being too perfect because you're going to cut everything out. Um, it's just a rough sketch. So, when I'm using my craft knife, you have to be very mindful that they are incredibly sharp and hold it as if you would a pencil and make sure that your fingers don't go to the bottom of the blade underneath. Um, if you want to, you can always wrap the plaster around that finger just to make sure that you don't cut yourself. Um, and what I generally do when I'm doing my paper cut work is I have a piece of card underneath me so that obviously you're not scratching into your tabletop surface or anything. 
So when I begin, I put the points of the blade in and then just with a smooth sweeping motion, turn my hand and let my hand flow down around the paper in a smooth motion and then just curve my hand. When you get to a curved point, it might be nice to leave the point in and then turn the paper as so. There we go. So there, I've got my little colorful bird ready. So the next stage is to actually do some really nice little paper cut designs into the actual bird so that when the bird's hanging on the mobile the light will shine through which is quite effective and you can get some extra details. So I'm going to get a pencil and you can do lots of circles, lots of triangles, small repeat patterns work quite nicely. Don't make them too complicated because when you're cutting, um, if you're doing circles it can be quite tricky. So maybe, maybe start with a square or some long lines or something, but you'll get the feel of it when you start cutting into it to know what, what you um, feel comfortable with. And also I'm going to leave quite a little um, bit of space at the top because when it comes to threading the bird to hang on the mobile um, you're going to have to be able to make sure that the bird's actually quite sturdy and it doesn't sort of like fall apart and become too flimsy. So I'm just going to mark where I'm going to put the needle mark at the top of the head. So I'm going to put a little eye for my bird and then I think he's just going to have a bit of a wing that comes down here so I'm just going to do a long curved straight line and then on his tummy I think I'll just do some seed shapes I was trying to think of the, 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 the shape um, and they can be varying in size and on the tail So you can be as imaginative as you want, so I'm not sure if you can actually see the pencil patterns that I've made there. So I'm just going to start to cut those out. Again, the point goes in and just do a curve for the eye. And there we go. don't know if you can see. And again, cut these seeds out. So you can see that the seeds have sort of like made their holes through the paper if I show you on the back. You don't want to put too many paper cuts into the bird because it will make it quite flimsy and it could sort of fall apart if you're not too careful. Less is more as they say. Sometimes the corners are a bit tricky to get out so you just need a little bit of patience and just get the blade and poke and go over those corners again and then just give it a good tug. Don't be frightened of um, pulling too hard. There's a, there's a fine line between being too worried so it would tear but also firm so it's just a bit of practice and then you'll get used to the feeling. And obviously it's not much fun clearing all of these bits up off the floor but anyway that's what hoovers are for. So um, here we go, that's my first little paper cut bird ready for my mobile and like I say you can um, maybe stick some tissue paper on the back so that you get a nice sort of like window, stained window effect or mix it with an, uh, um, another piece of paper to make a nice collage. Um, or you can just leave it with the holes in so the light shines through which is also really effective. So there we go, there's my first bird ready for the mobile there. And I'm going to use this music score because there's a lots of dancing mentioned in the poem which really inspired me because I think there's a lot of um, music out in Sheffield so I think it will resonate with a lot of people. Um, so I've got my vintage music score and again it's from the template that's available to download 
Um, this is quite nice because it's actually got the music on both sides. So what I'm going to do is something a little bit different and I'm going to make sort of like a stained glass window I guess. These simple effects are very very effective um, and they look quite pretty when it all comes together as a collection on one mobile. So what I'm going to do is just draw a little bit from the edge around the outline of the bird. There we go, like this, and again, the point in, and then move your arm and your hand, twist your hand and move your arm to pull the knife to make sweeping movements all the way around. There we go. So now we have this lovely outline of the bird. And if you wanted to, you can use this one again and work into it. Maybe do it again so it's a repeat pattern, so that you have lots of birds getting smaller and smaller. That would be really pretty. You can mix it with um, another part of the um, paper that you've already prepared with the paint and then glue it over the top and then cut it out. So you've got like a nice little series coming together. Um, you could use the tissue paper like we did last time, so it's quite delicate. And um, it's up to you. This is where you can let your imagination run wild. And do you know what? I think I'm gonna make a little collection. So I might use this with the paint splats. Spontaneous decision making here. So here we go. I'm just gonna glue very carefully. Busy, but I think you can maybe see it there and again with my favorite tool <laughs> cut around the edge I'm not sure but because it's quite a busy um, sort of like um, colorful texture inside the bird perhaps some of this music score gets lost so it might be nice to actually maybe use something like a tissue paper or something a little bit less vibrant so that the uh, music score doesn't get lost. I've just worked that out now by doing it, so this is the fun. You don't know what's going to happen until you have a go yourself. It's a bit tricky when um, I'm working with the wet glue, so when you've got time at home, um, maybe after gluing give it some time to dry and then you can cut nicely and it won't become a sticky mess. There we go. Right then. So there's my little singing songbird and it goes with my other one here. There we go, maybe I'll cut an eye. I mean, you can really work into these if you want to and you could probably continue to cut some more um, intricate paper cuttings into this section and then put the tissue paper behind it so you're having like a three three layered paper collage which could be really pretty actually. Let's see, I'll give you an example here. So yes, you can see that the tissue paper is coming through where the holes are there so you, that's the kind of effect that you'll probably get. Now, to go with these, I think it might be really pretty to have some smaller birds just to get a little bit of perspective on the mobile. So what I've got here is an old map um, and I think, you know, um, Sile is from Zimbabwe, she talks about, so it might be nice if you have an atlas at home that maybe you could um, trace the outline of the country where you're from or where you'd like to be um, or, or that resonates with you and then you can cut out a shape of a map into a map um, so it references your own journey and um, tells a story of your, your, your life. Um, so for now we're going to stick with birds because um, there are quite a lot of beautiful um, birds that are mentioned in, in the poetry um, and again you'll see that um, in the pack if you want to uh, um, there are some little templates that are made that you can um, print out and use or, or just go ahead and um, freestyle your own drawings um, 
So here I'm just going to cut out a small swallow. Now some of the paper that you cut into um, that you might find at home um, is actually quite thin. So what I've actually done is pre-prepared this and I've folded the paper in half and glued it together so that um, the mobile um, pieces come uh, become uh, quite strong um, because obviously they, they, they will be quite fragile when they're in the wind blowing around. Okay, there we go. <laughs> right. So now what we're going to do is lay out some of the pieces of the mobile. Now I really really enjoyed going for a walk in the, the parks and um, collecting things that I found around town. So keep your eyes open because there's always feathers and bits of leaves and dead branches that you can take. What I've actually done, I collected some leaves and to try and keep them flat in the mobile um, I just have actually done this overnight so I laid the flowers inside a piece of newspaper I've got a sweet chestnut, uh, a horse chestnut there um, um, so I laid it in, in between some newspaper and just put some a pile of heavy books or magazines or whatever you can find um, and then to help the plant dry out a little bit um, and so it's nice and firm for you to hang um, on your mobile. That's huge. So you can see I've got all of the components of my mobile here coming together. So we've got our big birds and our little, little ones. There he is little swallow. So maybe you might like to use some postcards that tell your story. Um, maybe when you were walking and collecting things that tells a story as well. Um, old photographs that you might have, you could maybe print those out. Be mindful of the paper selection that you're using um, so it all sort of resonates. Right, okay, so here we go. You can see this sort of coming together. Now for the fun part. So I'm going to get a needle and then poke a hole through the top of my bird here. Now I've found that actually this fishing wire which is quite thick works quite nicely because the cotton that I've used on some of the other mobiles they tend to get tangled up so if it's going in a windy spot you might be better to use this so that the paper doesn't all tangle together so much. So yeah, right Where's my needle? Here it is. Here we go. Right, I haven't got my glasses on right now, so this is good. There we go, that was lucky. Right, so I'm just going to thread the fishing wire through the top of my mobile. There we go, needle goes there. I'm going to pull the long bit through and have a short bit around the other side and I'm just going to tie a knot in the top. There we go. And we want the knot to, to hang, um, well to finish, right at the top of the mobile so that the mobile hangs straight down. Um, there we go. And then let's just cut off that extra bit there. So there's one of the components there. And then let's get this other bird here. There we go. forward a little bit with my mobile I have actually begun to hang things on this gorgeous twig that I found I'm just going to continue so I've got my fern and I'm just going to wrap the yellow cord around the top and I'm actually going to make a bit of a detail at the top of the branch here with the yellow thread I'll wrap it round and round and round 
And I think it's really beautiful to be able to just work with your hands and forget about things for a while. Um, and especially, you know, part of the enjoyment of this creation is being able to go out into nature and gather things. Um, so it's all part of the process, the creative process. And you can work together as a family or just on your own, whatever you choose, it's all really lovely to use your hands in this creative way. So here we are, I've got this lovely fern, so I'm just going to position it. Now when you're actually making your mobile, it's actually quite tricky to tie things when everything's lying down. So you might find it easier to hang it on maybe a door handle or the back of a chair or something so that you can sort of arrange where you want your um, little individual mobiles to hang at different levels and overlap them with the flowers um, so that you can have a little play around and enjoy placing them all together. So here we are. And I think I might put this fern quite high up onto the branch. And I'm going to wrap the yellow around the branch quite a few times because that will make a nice detail to go with all the greens and the moss on the top of the surface as well. Okay. I might have to stand up. Right, there we go. So you can see this gorgeous mobile coming together and I think with all of these leaves and these tropical colours it's looking really vibrant and colourful this one. I hope you've enjoyed this workshop with me today and you've been inspired by Through My Window installation and um, we'd love to hear your stories, your writing, poetry and see photographs of the mobiles that you create at home together. Um, if you would love to send any photos in that would be absolutely wonderful um, so please do so to inquiries at igniteimaginations.org.uk Thank you so much for joining in and um, enjoy the rest of the festival. Bye bye!